Welcome to the Raw and a Half podcast, where we get real in then some. My name is Jasmine Siri, and I will be your host. And every week, I will speak on different topics, share my experiences, tell my stories, and discuss different moments in my life and ways that I've moved through them consciously so that we can reach higher heights and deeper dimensions of the mind and come and succeed from a healed place together. We have planned, we have prepared, and we have prayed for this very special season in our lives right now. Where who we are, what we want to be, and the abundance of our life is finally falling into place. We have completely surrendered to the expansion of our lives. And if I could be a friend for you today, I would love the privilege of nurturing your heart and your mind where it is right now on this specific part of your journey. Today, I want to pour into anyone that could be feeling anxious yet excited for the many things that are on its way, and to remind you to congratulate yourself. You have come such a long way, and it deserves some acknowledgement and some recognition. You did the work. You honored your intentions consistently. You have come so far, and I just want to check in with you just like I would do any of my close friends and just pour into you. I just want you to know that you're doing absolutely great. So, let's get started. I'll put my business out there a little bit and say that one of my biggest struggles is my inability to clap for myself or recognize how far I've come. Because I've had so many experiences where my confidence and belief in self was misunderstood. And instead of being respected for the confidence I held, I was perceived as being cocky or lacking humility, obnoxious even. It forced me to quiet the love for myself or keep that secret in hopes that more people would feel comfortable around me or so that I could build more friendships. And over the years, I've had to nurture myself into the awareness of this truth that one, the people that made me feel less than for having confidence needed to make up for the confidence that they lacked. And it was much easier for them at the time to dim my flame than ignite real confidence within themselves because they just did not know how and probably were not raised with the tools to know how, and it's not their fault, and I can't judge them from their lack of awareness and how it could have been hurtful for the people around them. And two, any connection you build by dimming your own light is not a space you are meant to exist in. Because why would you dare put a cap on what God has called you to be just for the sake of community? just for the sake of feeling the void of your loneliness with people that somehow make you feel more alone. It's not until we truly walk in our truth and in our authentic selves that the right people are able to find us. So my best bet is to get to that authentic place as soon as possible if what you're seeking is community so that the right people can get closer to you. And three... At the end of your life, when you realize you've wasted your potential hiding in the shadows because of what someone else felt about you, will you then finally see and realize that it was more about the fear you had of your own potential than what anyone else outside of you felt about you? You know, I had to get real about taking accountability, and that nothing was holding me back but me. And when you see yourself as your biggest mountain to climb, and you are confident enough to walk the path of self-discovery to physically do something about it and act on your own behalf, things get real. Like, things start to change. You start to grow. You start to feel challenged. But that challenging friction that's happening in your life are what bring you to your next level. You know, And much like the feeling of excitement I have for officially getting on that horse and expanding or enlarging my territory by having my voice in podcast form, I felt it was time that the collective needed some acknowledgement for how far we've come. And I hate to do it, but I'm going to take you back a little bit. Do you remember in 2020 when the things that you have currently achieved or attained were just little sparks of a thought, maybe even a whisper or a possibility, 
would arise of you having that job or starting that business, mending that relationship, healing from the breakup. Remember when where you are now seems so far away? How many times do you spend the day just in awe of yourself, in awe of your resilience, in awe of your ambition, your tenacity, and your willpower not to stay stuck in your pain or in the past or in the versions of yourself that so many other people held so dear, but it wasn't required for you to meet the next level of your life. That just takes so much courage. I have always said that what doesn't grow is dead or is dying. From our relationships to friendships and even in our sense of self, I love self-actualization and the idea of potentially reaching my higher self. It's like a fun game for me. When it actually like clicked in my head that I have the power to make a difference in my life and that I am not my parents and that I am not my mistakes and that every day is an opportunity for something better, it inspired me and I hope that it inspires a lot more people. I feel like for a very long time because the world was just existing differently. Not, I think different conversations were being had back then. A lot of toxic things were happening. A lot of things have been swept under the rug. And now in this new age of truth and a lot of things being revealed, it's going to bring about a lot more in-depth conversations about the truth and everything that is happening with the within us. It's going to help us bridge the gaps of things that are being missed. I feel like there's so many people that are missing their mark as far as their purpose because there's something that hasn't been tapped yet. There's something unhealed so much that they are not even able to see their purpose in its full. So if we can get closer to that by having these challenging yet healing conversations, like I'm so ready for that. I hate what it's had to be in order for it to get that way, but I'm very excited of what's to come within us, within our community especially, with the conversations that are being had. I've never been one to play Sims, but I feel like there is nothing in my power that I cannot change. And for the past four years, since 2020, I have done so much rewiring of my subconscious mind. What about you? I feel like so many of us are on the same wavelength. I think that's how you guys found me. And so the fact that we can look at ourselves and see the new buds of growth forming on our sleeves where the damage once laid exposed and we have the nerve to not only be healed but like fine as F. And I don't know, maybe because it's springtime and the wildflowers are popping, I feel like it's time we pop out too. Yeah, like I see now why they tried to keep us in shackles. We are absolutely incredible. Just imagine if you didn't see the things in your past sent to distract you or destroy you as fuel to level up in the way that you have. Like that's a lot and it's amazing and it should be studied and you should feel very proud. I've been waiting to be at this specific place for years, me personally, and a little bit about me. I'm an actress and I've started using my voice on social media because I needed to be able to have a lifestyle that permits me to have the financial freedom and the freedom of time to audition and commit to the career path full time and give it the attention that it deserves. I also felt it was important for me to establish a brand to be able to compete against the many people who have the same path. If you are someone who is trying to develop an actual brand for yourself, I hope you stick around and be a part of this community. So I have a YouTube channel, but I enjoy using my voice in building community. And it's so funny because I use a microphone for my day-to-day -day job and I would get so much feedback about my voice. Like you should do voiceover acting. You should produce an audiobook. You have such a good sound. And I was like, okay. And for years I did nothing about it. Like, isn't it funny that we kind of do that to ourselves, that our calling could be right under our noses, but most importantly, more people are able to see your light and your calling before you. 
And we've been so hard-headed. We think we have all of this figuring out to do or that it's going to be so hard for us to figure out our purpose. And we stand outside with our palms open, waiting for our purpose to fall out of the sky. And it's been in our palms the entire time. And maybe God is giving us a block of clay and it's up to us to give it form. But instead of us bringing purpose to this thing, we kind of wait for someone else to move it for us. We wait for someone to create a shape for it. And I feel like that's when a lot of people settle. They're afraid to use their creative abilities and pivot and try to make something out of nothing. I think sometimes when we're dealing with a lot of things from our past and we're going about our life just trying to hold on to the little things that we have it's hard for us to create a new thing in our life and sometimes it's hard for God to create new things in our life because we are so dedicated to the past versions of ourselves our heartbreaks our pain and all of those things that have bruised us and we assume because we're bruised we're broken and we are not and we still have the ability to create something new. We are just fatigued. And if I can use my voice for anything and for anyone, I want to be a voice that allows a person to stand up again in their life and take their power back. Not because it's an easy thing to do, but because we were chosen and I like to think of my journey or everyone's journey as like the hero story. And you have the beginning, the origin story, and then you have the really dark, you know, betrayals, the heartbreaks, you know, all of the, the bad things that happen that kind of make a person too. And then the hero just kind of rises up anyway and has their redemption and they're able to walk in their purpose. And I want you to actually believe in your redemption story like this is not your final form by any means and there is more in store for you and in order for you to actually see that you have to believe it first and i know that's hard how can we believe something that we've never seen I think it's going to be a test to your faith and really understanding what faith actually is and that was hard for me because I always thought faith was such like a church thing. I was never someone that went to church a lot growing up. The relationship that I'm trying to establish with God is something that I chose to do outside of any type of religious um, push. So faith was something that I had to start from scratch of like, okay, what does that even mean? And how to how can I develop that without the performative fake belief in faith? Because there's one thing to say that you have faith and there's one thing to actually walk in the belief of something that you have not seen before. And it is a journey. You're not going to be good at it at first. And a lot of the times we judge ourselves in the way that we believe, in the way that we see ourselves spiritually and I will talk more about this as we get, you know, get to really get into the good stuff as far as the topics that I'm going to share. But um, faith is a journey worth going towards. And it's going to trickle into a lot of different things in your life when you start to be intentional about building faith in that way. I don't know about you, but it feels so good to have a vision and to see maybe what the future holds by a couple of steps and notice all that it's requiring of you to exist there. And it is scary, right? But you look back on how far you've come and realize like, okay, I didn't get brought this far because I wasn't supposed to reach the top. And that's just scratching the surface. So let me tell you, I was watching the story of Moses on Netflix and I was intrigued 
and I like the style of storytelling that they do where there's actors and there's that type of storytelling, but then there's also historians and different people who study biblical text that also speak from a deeper perspective. We reach the part of the story where he was called to the top of Mount Sinai and he finally made the decision to tell his wife that like, hey, I feel like I'm being called to go to the top. Like I have to go. This is what I must do. And his wife, who is also pregnant by the way, says like, no one has ever gone there. You may not come back. And there's a shot of him at the bottom of the mountain looking forward and it's such a great shot and he just has this look of fear on his face like okay this is what i'm doing it was probably the hardest and physically taxing thing that he has ever done in his life but it still did not compare to the true task that was required of him once he reached the top and I see that so clearly for us, like there will be a mountain that God calls us to climb and it's to test our will. It's to test our inner strength and determination and obedience to see if we are truly ready for our mission. And sometimes it takes us being at our lowest and most humbling times to be ready for it. And we get upset that we've actually reached that point, but that was all we needed to prepare and even when we hear the call, we feel insecure about it. We take it and harbor imposter syndrome and we question like, why us? But why not us? You know, God loves to show his power by making miracles out of us. So it's time to step into your power and shine regardless. The wait is over. Be bold and unapologetic about what you are meant to do in this world because we we don't know what the future holds we don't know how much time we have and that's a real thing i think this year as i'm getting older and i'm witnessing so many people not be here anymore it's kind of led me to think about like okay what is my legacy what am i leaving behind what do i have to offer this world and some people don't really spend their time thinking about these things and I completely understand that but for the people that do you're having those feelings and you're questioning these things for a reason so it's an opportunity for you to explore more of what is actually being called for you to do I just want to say thank you all so much for being on this journey with me and meeting me here on YouTube as well as on Spotify now that I have enlarged my territory into putting my voice out there. I'm just so happy that I've cultivated a community enough that um, it's starting to grow and it's starting to do things that um, I'm really looking forward to. So do not forget to download, like, comment, share, subscribe, leave me some info and feedback. Let me know on Instagram what you feel. Follow me on Instagram at jasmine.siri and I can't wait to see you guys in my next one. And love you guys so much. Bye.